Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.1.1 to the public. iOS 17.1.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're not a beta tester. If you're a beta tester on iOS 17.2, you won't see this update. However, if you're not, go to your software update and you'll see it there. And this released alongside a lot of other updates, such as iPadOS 17.1.1, WatchOS 10.1.1, and many others. Now this update came in at 390.6 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and was about the same size on all the devices here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21B91. This particular update fixes a few issues and has some security updates as well. And this one actually also has a new modem update. So if you're updating from iOS 17.1, you should have a modem update going to 17.1.1, hopefully resolving some connectivity issues or some other issues along those lines. Now, as far as new features, changes, or bug fixes, well, there's no new features in this update, but rather fixes to existing issues we've already had. One of those has to do with charging when you're in a BMW or other car that actually has wireless charging. Apple doesn't specifically call out BMW, but what they say is in rare circumstances, Apple Pay and other NFC features may become unavailable on iPhone 15 models after wireless charging in certain cars. We know this was an issue with BMW, and it was getting so hot it was melting issues or causing damage to the NFC chip. That's been resolved in this update, hopefully in other cars as well. Typically, I found this to be true in many German cars or others that you're just wirelessly charging in in general. So that hopefully fixes it. Again, another heat issue that they've resolved with the iPhone 15. Another issue they've fixed has to do with widgets on the lock screen. So if we go to the lock screen and you'll see here we have a widget. If it's actually snowing out, there was a little paper icon there before. That should now be resolved. Where it was a problem before, it's now been resolved in this update. As far as additional fixes, well, they don't mention anything else whatsoever. There's still some bugs in this we'll talk about in a moment, but they haven't mentioned anything else other than that specifically. So why they've only fixed two little issues with that, I'm not sure. They also fixed that same weather widget bug on the iPad as well. As far as security updates, if we go to Apple's security website and scroll down, you'll see here that it actually says iOS 17.1.1 and iPadOS 17.1.1. There's no published CVE entries. That doesn't mean they didn't fix something, they're just not telling us about it. The same is true with all the different releases today. Now, one issue they're not mentioning whether or not they've resolved is the rebooting issue where people's phones would just reboot while they're charging at night. We haven't heard anything from Apple about this. That also affects alarms. So if you have any alarm set you're hoping to wake up from, sometimes if it reboots, those alarms won't go off. I would love to hear something from Apple on this and hopefully they resolve it very soon, but we haven't heard anything. Additionally, the wallpaper fading bug is still there. When you set a wallpaper and you're on your lock screen, when you go to swipe home, when you set it for the first time, typically it will be washed out and just not vibrant compared to what we had when we set it. That's something that was a bug and I saw it again when setting the wallpaper in iOS 17.1.1. So there's some odd issues there. You can see it right there as I swipe home, it gets vibrant and then it goes back to not being vibrant. So that's something they need to resolve with the next update. Additionally, the notification bug seems to be ever present. It doesn't ever seem to be resolved for me, but I don't have any notifications on this screen to share with you, but typically you would swipe down and it would just sort of jump around where we have it on this phone. So if we go to this one, you'll see this is actually running a beta. So if we swipe up, Typically we swipe up and they jump in. I haven't seen that be resolved yet on anything. So let me know if you've noticed any difference there as well. Now iOS 17 has actually had quite a few bugs in it. In fact, we thought it would be more of a stability release here and we still have issues that Apple hasn't mentioned such as maybe a volume bug that's still there, additional issues with connectivity, with Wi-Fi that's supposed to be addressed in the next update with iOS 17.2. So there's lots of little things going on and there's also some good news to go along with that. While we thought this would be a stability update, it looks like Apple's actually focusing more on stability with iOS 18. While that's quite some time off, according to Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, he actually said that Apple has paused production on iOS 18 to fix all the bugs with the first release as they're already working on it with features and more. So they're really working on that development to get it right. Hopefully they really cut down on features and just give us a bug free release. I think many people would appreciate that and we would be fine not having those features as fast as long as the overall experience is very stable. So that's something I really hope they focus on going forward. 
forward, and we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. One other update I wanted to mention is that Apple updated PowerBeats Pro and Beats Fit Pro. So that's a small update. We don't know exactly what they've fixed. They haven't updated their website with it yet, but hopefully they've resolved some issues that people were having with that. We've been waiting for an update for Beats. We've had AirPods updates in the past. We just haven't had them for Beats for a while. So let me know if you've already installed that. The new version is 6B27 for those new Beats updates. When it comes to performance, Apple again has not said anything with that, but so far it seems to be good, especially with benchmarks that we'll check in just a moment, but just swiping through different things. ProMotion seems nice and fast, and in general, I don't notice any differences whatsoever, and I wouldn't expect you to notice any differences. As far as the overall heat, while it's staying nice and cool, after about the first 30 minutes or so after installing the update, I noticed that it cooled right down like you would expect. It does have to process a lot of things in the background, so give it some time there, but let's take a quick look with the thermal camera. On the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we're at about... 91.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the iPhone 11, that's just been sitting here about the same 91.5, maybe a little bit warmer. So not bad overall. You can see the conversions to Celsius here as well. Well, as far as battery health and battery life, I've been running iOS 17.2 beta one full time on my 15 pro max here. And if we go to general and then about, I have 36 cycles of the battery on my full time iPhone. I've been using this since it launched with the exception of reviewing the 15 pro and 15 plus. And if we go down to battery, give it just a moment, battery health and charging. We're at hundred percent, of course, since it's newer. And today I've had pretty good battery life, two hours and 56 minutes of screen active time, two hours and two minutes of screen idle time and used about, well, about 32% of the battery as I'm at 68%. It's getting me through the day. By the time I go to bed, I still have 40, 40 maybe 50% of my battery life left. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.1.1, well, for those fixes, absolutely, especially if you're on an iPhone 15 model. However, if you're on iOS 17.2, I wouldn't bother downgrading to it. And speaking of iOS 17.2, I would expect beta 2 as soon as to probably tomorrow at this point or later this week. Typically we'll have it two weeks out. It's been a couple weeks. I would expect it tomorrow or Thursday at this point. So that's really what I'm expecting out of that. As far as benchmarks, we actually have pretty good benchmarks here. And you'll see we have 2,978 for single core, 7,359 for multi-core. Compared to what we had before, I've actually run this twice today, but compared to what we had before, we're right where we should be. We're a little bit higher for single core compared to previous versions on 17.0.3 and about the same for multi-core within a hundred or so it's basically the same experience. So that's everything with iOS 17.1. If you'd like me to make a video about watchOS or others, let me know in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.